Hi everyone, Heather here with PerstephanyReturns.com and I am back with your weekly forecast. Um, it's the new year, we're in 2018. Uh, we just had the new moon in Capricorn, which is a really powerful new beginning. The first new moon after the winter solstice is always a big one, a good one for setting new intentions, for starting new things. You know, the sun is in Aquarius and here I am. Uh, as promised, I'm back with your weekly forecast for all 12 signs. And uh, so today I'm going to be going over, you know, the astrology for the week very briefly. I do do write um, a written forecast every single week that goes into really great detail about the general astrology, but I'm going to use this as more of um, a platform to provide information about the individual astrology on a more personal basis by each rising and sun sign. And so if you're new to this channel, if you've never watched before, my name is Heather and I'm an astrologer. Um, you might know me from astrolata.com um, and astrolata's YouTube. You might know me from some other places as well. I've done work um, in a lot of different areas, but mostly written. <laughs> so you might not know my face, um, but I've been an astrologer for quite some time now. And um, yeah, and so this is you know where I show up each week to help you guys through the week, to help you guys plan your week, to help you guys sort of utilize the energy ahead in the best possible way. And um, you might have noticed that I changed the name of my channel because I'm going Going to be starting something new this year. So I would like to use this channel as a platform not only to talk about the astrology and to give you guys, you know, forecasts and tips and hints as to what's coming up, but I would like to, you know, really get into the energies that are coming up for the next couple of years, especially with Uranus moving into Taurus, because that's going to be a huge major influence. Everything is going to be changing, you know, from the way that we grow our food to the way that we look at currency and the money system to, you know, the way that we go about healing our bodies and, uh, you know, medicine and things like that will change and there'll be a lot of new innovations and a lot of push to go back to the way things were a more natural way of being and you know working with the earth working with our bodies uh, communicating and collaborating with one another so it's going to be a very interesting and exciting time period and it's going to be a lot of change coming up and so you know between that and Saturn moving into Capricorn in the next couple of years you know with Saturn in Capricorn moving into that conjunction with Pluto which happened in 2020 there's a lot of transformation going on and a lot of changes globally and individually that we're going to have to be working through and so that's why I've named this channel or renamed this channel beyond astrology uh, because I'm going to go a little bit beyond that my first interview that I'm going to do is going to be with uh, my teacher Robert Phoenix who some of you might know from Gaia TV or from my interviews on astrolata.com with him or his radio show uh, the 11th house which he you know does on a daily and weekly basis and uh, we're going to be talking about all of the upcoming planetary alignments for the next couple of years and the major changes that we're going to be going through and some of the solutions and some of the things that we can do with that energy as it unfolds. And that's really going to be my focus on this channel for the next couple of years. I'm going to be bringing in uh, people that are not just astrologers, but, you know, some close friends, some people that I've, I've, um, worked with professionally throughout the years who I really think have something to bring to the table when it comes to uh, dealing with the upcoming changes and dealing with what's coming, you know, the, the solutions to uh, all of this, right? Because this, the breakdown seems to be happening on its own. The system is collapsing in and of itself. A destructive system such as the one that we're in right now, of course, is going to self-destruct and that that's taking care of itself. So now we really need to focus on, um, first off, identifying what the problems are. That's part of it, but knowing how we can and create solutions. And so I hope that you'll join me uh, over the next few, few months. I'm going to have a lot of interesting people on this channel and we're going to be doing interviews and talks under the framework of the astrology of these times and what's going on in the skies. But it's going to be, um, the topics will, will differ, you know, and the, the meat of the of the content will, will differ and vary depending on what's going on and what is needed. And so um, if you want to, you know, stick around and if you want to see what I have to offer you guys uh, in the coming months, be sure to subscribe to this channel um, and you can find that little button right below <laughs> somewhere where I'm pointing. And yeah, so anyway, so I'm going to get into the astrology for this week. There's a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, this week is all about communication. There's a lot of mercury action going on. And this isn't just like chitter chatter and, um, you know, small talk communication communication. Mercury is going to be in alignment with both Pluto, you know, which is the planet that it rules intensity, death, sex, uh, the darker side of life, the deeper 
truth. You know, it's, it's all, it's about power, power struggles. Um, it's about feeling more empowered. It's about exploring our deepest fears. It's about transformation, right? When we're talking about Pluto, Pluto is the underworld. It's the planet of death, rebirth, and transformation. And so, um, there's going to be a lot of energy with Mercury conjunct Pluto around communication and around really deep and really intense communication. So expect that the communication that you'll come into this week will not necessarily be light and fluffy. You'll be having to uh, really focus in on the deeper issues and getting, get to, getting to the core of what's going on in your life and how to transform it and transmute it and how to empower yourself to change from the inside out. That's what Pluto is about. It's about change that comes from a deeper place from the inside out. And so that's going to be a lot of the energy of this week. But um, don't think that it's going to be super, super hard and deep and intense. I mean, it will. There, w there will be a lot of depth to uh, the conversations and our mental energy and you know the things that we're thinking about, the things that we're seeing in the media. It's going to be darker. It's going to be deep. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't if we saw another sort of Me Too scandal thing coming out into the open, uh, which is another you know manifestation of Jupiter and Scorpio, uh, which I talked about with my teacher Robert Phoenix a few months ago on Lotus Channel. If you want to hop on there and look at that. But Jupiter and Scorpio is actually going to be in a nice sextile with Mercury right after it comes into that conjunction with Pluto. And now this energy is reminiscent of the energy that we started last week with on Monday with that Jupiter-Pluto uh, sextile, which is going to be coming on and off throughout the entire year in 2018. So this is going to be sort of a major theme of 2018 is this supportive sextile between Jupiter, which is like the great benefic, right? It's very optimistic, very open, very expansive. But when it's in Scorpio, it's expanding on the things that are deeper, that are more secretive, that are more difficult, that are hidden and taboo and bringing those things out into the open, but doing so in a way that is easy for us to digest and understand where we're not we realize once it comes out to be open that it's not as scary as we once thought it was. And so that's a lot of the Jupiter and Scorpio energy and in this really nice sextile with Mercury um, and with Pluto on and off this year, we're really going to be doing the deeper work, but it's going to come very easily as long as you engage with it, right? When you have a sextile, it's not something that just happens on its own. You have to activate that. You have to act on the energy and, you know, create something with it. And so that's a big theme this year is, you know, going deeper, looking at the structures in our lives and how they've sort of taken hold and taken control of us, especially with Saturn moving into Capricorn and what we need to purge and let go of in order to create and build new structures for our lives that are much more beneficial for us in, in the end, right? And this is not a a one-time quick process. This is something that's slow and methodical and it takes little small um, insights and efforts on a day-to-day -day basis. And this will be going on throughout the year in 2018. And, you know, so that's going to be highlighted a little bit this week as well. As we come to the end of the week, we're going to have a square. So after this like harmonious energy, it's causing us to really look at our plans, look at the truth, do the deeper work, look at the deeper issues, the deeper topics, to connect more intimately with people in our surroundings through communication. All of these themes will come up. And then more toward the end of the week, there's going to be a challenge, um, a challenge that comes across in a way, it's going to be like a mental challenge, um, an intellectual challenge. It's going to be something where uh, we have to really take a look at what it is that we've been um, that what all the plans and all the processes and all the communications that we have sort of engaged in throughout the week, they're going to come to this point where we need to do something with, with it, where we need to act on it, where we're challenged to make an important change. And so that's going to come up into the weekend. So we'll start to see what that energy is going to bring to us as we move through the week. All right. So... Um, let's see, we're going to go through everything by sign. I have, of course, my poorly drawn <laughs> chart wheel here so I can look at what's going on for each of the signs and flip it around and, and all of that. And so I'm going to be going through all of these by rising sign or sun sign. Always check for your rising sign first if you know it. And if you don't know um, your rising sign, you can always go to astro.com and type in your birth information. And you do need an exact time and the correct location of your birth for this. But if you have that information, you can come up with your rising sign. And when you have your rising sign, this is gonna make this a little bit more accurate. Because when you listen to a video or read a sun sign forecast or a horoscope, um, as some call it, it's 
it's based, they, it's written or, um, or portrayed in a way where it puts the sun on your ascendant. So it makes it as though your sun sign were your rising sign, which is in a relatively accurate way of um, doing astrology. There's nothing wrong with that. It's been done that way for a very long time, but it gives you a little bit of a different interpretation. And so this, the rising sign interpretation is going to be a little bit more accurate, a little bit more precise. The sun sign is still going to be relevant. Some people like to listen for their moon. That's okay too. Not my thing, but um, you know, the moon is going to give you a little bit more of an internalized interpretation. So it's going to give you a more subjective um, viewpoint of what's going on. It's less external. It's less focused on physical sort of out, outward expressions of the energy. So take that into account and take that into mind um, when you are listening for your moon sign in particular. And as always, this is a very general forecast uh, for all 12 signs. This is not going to apply to every single person in every single sign just because you do have your own astrology. There are planets all over your chart that are interacting with the planets in the sky. And there's no way to account for that without doing a personal reading with me. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one personal reading with me, you can absolutely do that at the link below in the description of this video. I I'm happy to connect with you and to go through your birth chart, go through the transits. In fact, I'm still doing my uh, 2018 transit reading special. So if you want to get a you know hour long transit reading for you know going really deeply into detail about what's coming up for you in 2018, you can do that. Uh, the link is in the description below for twenty dollars off now through January 31st. All right, now that I got all that out, <laughs> let's talk about the astrology and how it's going to be influencing all of you. All right, so um, I'm going to start with Aries and Aries rising. So for Aries rising, the beginning of this week is going to start out, um, you know, pretty, you're going to feel pretty fired up and pretty ready to go. Most of us will because the moon will actually be in the sign of Aries and um, it will be making a combination of you know, really harmonious and really challenging aspects. This is going to be actually the waxing crescent phase exact of the moon on Monday. So we're starting to see um, the very first hints of manifestation from what it is that we seeded at that new moon in Capricorn that came exact last Tuesday, that really powerful, potent new moon in Capricorn that's kicking off eclipse season, right? I haven't been on here for a while, so I need to talk about that too. That new moon in Capricorn was the beginning officially of the first eclipse season of 2018. So we are in an eclipse cycle right now. And so you might know, you might, you might have noticed, you might see, you might feel that things are a little strange, that there are a lot of um, things that are manifesting pretty quickly, that, um, you know, there are a lot of signs, synchronicities, connections that are coming up that are very strange, that feel very either ominous or synchronous or whatever it is. And so that energy is starting already. And so that's something to be aware of as we, you know, move into the week, we're moving closer and closer to that eclipse that's happening on the 31st of January, which will actually be exact uh, next week on Wednesday. So we will actually, yeah, next week on Wednesday. So we'll talk about that uh, as we go into next weekend's forecast. But for right now, the moon will be in Aries as we start off the week. So you're going to be focusing on yourself, your own needs for Aries rising people. I'm starting with Aries rising now. You're going to be focused more on your own needs, um, what your own self, uh, your own expression of will, you know, your own self-interest. This sort of spotlight um, on, on Monday is going to be on you, right? So it's you, what you need to feel safe, secure, um, emotionally stable, emotionally settled, what you need to feel satisfied on an internal level. Uh, that's going to be a lot of the energy of Monday. It's also going to be an energy that sort of fires up. Um, the week, right? So you're going to be ready to get going. You're going to be ready to initiate action. There will be challenges from Saturn uh, because the moon will come into square with Saturn very early on Monday morning. And that's going to challenge us to really put in the hard work, the long hours on Monday. And you're going to be feeling that more so than the other signs. So I did want to take that into account. And then as we move into later in the week on Tuesday, uh, the moon will be in Taurus. And so the focus is going to shift from you and your own self-interest and what you're creating and building in terms of material manifestation out in the world. So there'll be a, a little bit more of a focus on money for um, Aries rising. And then that uh, conjunction that comes exact on Wednesday and Thursday. So Wednesday, we have the conjunction between Mercury and Pluto. And on Thursday, we have that sextile between Mercury and Jupiter. And so this is going to be um, 
you know, an energy that's good, really going to pick up, especially midweek because Mercury moves really quickly. This is not going to be a long uh, influence. It's just going to be for a couple of days. So you'll feel it like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe into Friday and that's it. And so with the energy of this Mercury conjunction to Pluto, all of that intense um, mental focus, that intense focused energy, that intense conversation, the intimate conversation is going to be centered around your work and what it is that you're doing out in the world. And so this is a time for you to focus on your work. You're going to have a lot of major new developments, a lot of major insights. This is really good for really focused energy on, you know, your career path, your career goals, your responsibilities. And there's some support coming in from the eighth house of all places where you have to sort of take a, a deeper look at your belief systems, uh, your own personal truth, your own deep seated patterns and habits and issues that are preventing you from transforming what it is that you're doing out in the world. And from, you know, finding that deeper passion, that deeper meaning, that deeper purpose in the work that you're doing. And so there's going to be uh, a bit of a challenge to go inward and to really look at yourself. You're going to get some support. You can get some material support in your work from some sort of outside source. If you're applying for like a business loan or something like that, um, or, you know, maybe your, your business partner could bring in some more money, some investments could pay off and that can help you to create um, the transformation that you need to create something along those lines. Um, with Jupiter in the eighth house of all places because the eighth house rules things like debt, other people's money, money that we get through inheritance or through someone else's hard work other than our own, right? So this is like a time when you can get some benefits from other people's resources and funnel that into any projects that you're doing for your work, your career, your business, whatever it is. And as we come in later into the week, uh, there is going to be a square from Mercury to Uranus, which we mentioned at the beginning of this video. And so the Mercury Uranus square is going to be affecting you personally. So um, the plans that you make, uh, midweek might be subject to change and that's just something to be aware of or they might cause you because you looked you went a little bit deeper and you had those deep intense difficult conversations and you realize wow this isn't as scary as i thought it was going to be i needed to work through this and look at this if you do that work and if you utilize that energy the change it can be a challenge but you're going to realize there's something that you need to change about yourself and the way that you're engaging in life the way that you're interfacing and interacting with other people in your life in order to you know reach your goals and to make that transfer so there's going to be a lot of energy, communication, thought processes, a lot of intensity around your career and your public reputation. And that's going to cause you to make some sort of change that you need to initiate yourself. It's not going to just happen for you. This is something that you need to do because it is in your first house. So it's you creating change and changing yourself out in the world, uh, you know, as a result of these influences. And uh, so, yeah, so that's Aries. <laughs> So for Taurus and Taurus rising, on Monday, even though the moon is in Aries, you might feel a little bit sort of sleepy, a little dreamy. Um, the moon will be in your 12th house, so that's it's. you're not going to be jumping into the week as much as a lot of the other signs will with this Aries fire energy. It's going to be more about your comfort zones going inward, your dreams, your fantasies, um, your spirituality. This is a really good time to engage in spiritual practice, especially physical expressions of spiritual practice. So Monday might be a little bit of a failure to launch in terms of like doing things outwardly, but in terms of internal work, it's going to be very fruitful. Um, as we come into Tuesday and, you know, the middle of the week, you know, the moon will be in Taurus. And so with the moon in Taurus, that's going to highlight you, right? It's going to highlight uh, what you need, <laughs> your own self-interest, what you need to feel comfortable, safe, secure, what you need to feel emotionally uh, supported in your life and in your, you know, day-to-day -day experience and whatever it is that you want to create out in the world will be highlighted on Tuesday. As we come into the middle of the week, that really intense energy surrounding communication, our thought processes, intimacy, uh, getting to the truth, focusing our intention, focusing um, our mental energy on something very specific, uh, that's going to be in your ninth house. So this is going to be really looking at your beliefs and um, you know your experience and what you feel this, all of this is, right? It's looking at your philosophies and the deeper philosophies about life, the universe. This is also a time when you could think about, you know, going to school or like um, taking some sort of courses or finding a teacher to help you work through some of the deeper issues, the deeper topics, so you can learn things that um, are a little bit more below the surface, that are a little bit more intensive. And uh, with Jupiter in this sextile, you can have a lot of benefits that are coming from, you know, partnership, a lot of really interesting communications, especially in romantic partnerships, business partnerships, close one on one relationships. Uh, some deeper issues and some deeper truths can be revealed in those areas and 
they can help you to sort of uh, think a little bit more about what it is that you believe in life and to transmute and transform that energy to create something new. And so this could also be a time when you're making plans for like travel or, you know, going to a foreign country, something along those lines, in addition to learning new skills, higher education, searching a little deeper and all of that as well. Um, and, you know, conversing about these topics with people that'll probably come up for you too. And then as we move into, um, you know, later this week, you're going to have that square to Uranus, which is going to be a lot of really intense mental energy causing you to need to change something. And so, um, sorry. <laughs> And so, uh, so, you know, that's going to be a change that needs to come from within, right? Because it's in your 12th house. There's a lot of changes going on in terms of ending, surrender, letting go, but also uh, changes that are, you know, changes to your spirituality. Again, this is in alignment with your belief systems, right? So if your belief systems change, if you're examining that, you're going to have to change your spiritual practices and the way that you, you know, uh, go inward and look at those things a little bit more as well. Um, you know, this could be, um, a little bit unsettling in terms of like dreams and your internal dialogue and the things that are going on beneath the surface. There's going to be a, a sense toward the end of the week that there's something wrong that needs to change. You know, it's going to be a little bit of a turbulent energy, but it's going to be like internalized. So it's some sort of frustration and that's going to show you what needs to change where and how. And so paying attention to those feelings that will help guide you into making the right decisions and to making the right changes instead of just changing things really hastily. There will be a lot of like confused mental energy going on um, you know, during, toward the, toward the end of, uh, of next week. So that's just something to be aware of as well, but a lot of energy surrounding your beliefs, um, God, the universe, philosophy, your integrity, questions of your integrity, those types of things. All right. Gemini and Gemini rising. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, we start off the week with the moon in Aries, and that's going to be focusing more on friends, networking. This is a really good time to kick off the week by, like, getting into, you know, some good networks to, you know, find the right people to connect with, to network with all the right people in all the right places and all the right time. Um, just know that if you do meet new people, if you do come into new friendships that start at the beginning of the week, they might not be what they seem because the last aspect the moon makes in Aries is a conjunction to Uranus, so that indicates that something might change um, and it might change unexpectedly in those areas. So whatever it is that you initiate, just, you know, be flexible with it because, you know, the universe might have other plans for you and other plans for these friendships, but it's going to be a lot of energy around your social networks and your social groups. And then Tuesday, you'll be wanting to go a little bit more inward to retreat um, a little bit more so. And this whole week, actually, um, you know, Jupiter is a little bit active in your sixth house, which is going to be expanding on your work, your health habits, um, creating better health for yourself. And this is actually, you know, a week when you can really hone in on the deeper issues that are causing any health problems that you might have because you have this Pluto Mercury conjunction in the eighth house. The eighth house is one of the healing houses. It's deeply regenerative, deeply restorative, and it helps you to look at the deeper issues below the surface that are causing the problems that are outwardly manifesting. And so, you know, things can come up and, and topics can come up in, in conversation, communication, and also in your thought processes surrounding power struggles, surrounding deep psychological patterns that you're holding on to. And as we come into um, the end of the week, you're going to realize that there's some sort of change that needs to be made. And some of that change might have to do with your um, social networks and those groups of people that you spend your time with, because, you know, they might be bogging you down, blocking you, preventing you, um, judging you, doing something that causes you to not do the deeper work or not to express your truth or that disempowers you in some sort of way. So looking at that is going to be important as well. And again, being flexible and being willing to sort of let go when you need to let go and change when you're called to change this week. And, you know, it might not be a big, crazy, you know, dramatic thing. If you have planets around 19, you know, 20 degrees in, uh, in Capricorn or, you know, in Taurus or in Scorpio, there might be a little bit more, um, you know, interesting <laughs> sort of turbulence that comes up. But um, yeah, so that is Gemini. Cancer and Cancer Rising. Um, so for you guys, you're going to start off the week focusing, really being really focused on your work and your career. And, you know, this is a really uh, good week for you to start off, things off right, to jump right in, to do the hard work, to really focus on your career goals, on any big projects, on your public reputation. You know, this is a time for you to start working, right? So you need to work this week. And then, um, you know, as we come into 
in the middle of the week, it's going to be more focused on networking, right? And your friends and your social groups. And toward the end of the week, you might want to retreat back inward because there's been a lot of action going on. Um, and for you, that conjunction between Pluto and Mercury is happening in your seventh house. So this is going to be really intense, intimate, deep conversations on a one-on-one -on -one basis in all of your relationships where the deeper issues are going to come to the surface to be discussed and, and analyzed and transformed. And, you know, especially when it comes to romance and there could be, you know, some sort of romance going on in your life or some sort of new hobbies, new passions, new belief systems that need to be sort of um, integrated into your relationships and into especially your romantic relationships so you can have a little bit more fun, a little bit more passion in your, in your connections with your loved ones. And especially, again, romantically, that's going to be a thing. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of really intense communication, power struggles, and issues of power in relationships can come up. And you might need to talk about it, discuss it, work through it, change something, right? And changing something in these areas is going to, um, or looking at these areas, examining these areas, conversing about these areas, thinking about, you know, who has the power how am I allowing myself to be disempowered in my relationships? That's going to lead to you changing something um, about your career, your public life, what you're doing out in the world. And that change is going to start to uh, integrate toward the end of this week. So, you know, the, the conversations that you have with people midweek that are going to be really intense and really sort of focused in on certain topics and issues, especially the deeper stuff, the darker stuff, the structures that you've created in your relationships that need to be transformed and transmuted into something better, that's going to lead you to make a change outwardly, um, especially when it comes to your career and your public reputation. All right, Leo and Leo rising. So uh, the start of this week, you're going to be focusing more on fun, on adventure. Uh, you might be kind of thinking, you know, off in la la land about the, you know, the future and your big goals, your big aspirations, your big plans. Also thinking about, you know, going back to school, those types of things. Um, and then as we come into the middle of the week, the focus is going to be more on getting back to work, right? So um, it will be a really good time for you to plan big projects and plan for the future as we come into Monday, the first day of the week. And then as we come into the middle of the week, you can start taking action and start doing the hard Hard work and you know toward the end of the week you're gonna be more focused on networking friends uh, you know that type of thing so that's gonna come up for you as well so you know spending time around your friends around the people that you love um, to spend time around the people that support you the people that allow you to have a little bit more fun and more playfulness that's gonna come up toward the end of the week and that's gonna be a little bit of a reprieve from all the hard work that you were doing at the beginning of this week um, and especially because midweek we have that Mercury-Pluto conjunction happening in your sixth house. And so this indicates that you're going to have a lot of really intense communication with your coworkers or around, you know, work or around health and health routines. If you have a doctor's visit, you might have, you know, some sort of intense conversation with your doctor where they're like, hey, man, you really have to, you know, get on this. You really need to change the way that you are dealing with your body and the way that you are feeding yourself or something along those lines. Taking a good hard look at your daily habits and how those contribute to disempowering you out in the world. That's really what this week is, is about. And that's really what that time period is about. Um, there can be a little bit of support that comes through the home, through family, through the people that you love and that you're closest to, through your property, um, through your living situation, that could at, at the very least feel like a very nice sort of rest and relaxation where the, there's a lot of great benefits that come through, you know, focusing on your comfort zones and expanding on those. And actually by honing in on the routines that are detrimental to you, that are disempowering to you, you can, you know, better your comfort zones. You can improve your relationships with your family members uh, by just by improving yourself and looking at yourself more truthfully and, you know, your habits a little bit more truthfully. So bad habits, old habits are going to die hard this week. Um, you know, people might be criticizing you about, you know, your habits and showing you the truth in a way that you might not feel comfortable with. But once you look at it and you realize that you're going to be like, wow, okay, yeah, I understand. I do need to change this or I do need to transform this or this is really the issue that's been plaguing me. And now I understand it a little bit better. Um, Virgo rising as well, you know, there is going to be an impetus to change and it's going to have to do with your belief system. So the, um, or actually, let's see, I'm, that's incorrect. <laughs> the change that's coming um, for Virgo rising. I'm in the wrong sign, aren't I? I am. So uh, the change that's coming for Virgo rising is actually, was I talking about Leo or Virgo? I was talking about Leo. Sorry. I am, I am in the right zone. So for Leo rising still, hopefully this is still Leo rising that I was talking about. <laughs> 
I am sorry, guys. I have Mercury sitting right on my uh, Neptune, and it's finally just starting to let up, but I'm a little bit discombobulated still from that. So um, for the Leos that I'm still talking to and still, still talking about, you're going to have to change your belief systems, your philosophies. So this change in the body, this change in your routines is going to lead to a change in your philosophies, your belief systems, your big term, long-term goals and big plans in life. Um, and so you might need to learn something new and integrate that, right? Learn something new and innovative, find a new teacher, like start learning about, you know, alternative medicines, alternative therapies, those types of things that can come up as well. So, um, yeah. Okay. Virgo and Virgo rising. Now we're on Virgo. Um, so for Virgo rising, this is going to be an interesting week for, uh, looking so it's going to start off kind of interesting because we start off with the moon in Aries right the moon in Aries is going to be in your eighth house so this could be kind of an intense start to the week where you're looking at your passions you're looking at your deeper truth you're acting on your passions you're acting on your sexuality your sensuality you're looking at the things that um, you're fearful of and you know a lot of times when the moon is in the eighth house emotionally we can feel a little bit on edge or a little bit in crisis or you know the things that we fear the most can sort of come up um, to affect on an emotional level, right? So there's going to be a little bit of intensity at the beginning of the week for Virgo rising people. And then as we move into, uh, you know, Wednesday midweek in particular, that energy is going to shift and you're going to be focusing more on your belief systems, your big plans, adventure, long-term goals, um, you know, new education that you might want to embark on adventures, those types of things. So it'll be focusing on that. And then as we get to the end of the week, you're really going to be putting in the work when it comes to your career and focusing on your public reputation, your career, your work. And, you know, um, that that conjunction between Mercury and Pluto is going to be in your fifth house. So this is going to be focusing on midweek communication and look, taking a deep, good, hard look at your passions and what you, the way that you structure um, your creativity and what it is that you create out, out into the world based on the things that you're passionate about, based on your heart. So how you create from the heart and what is your deeper truth in that area. Uh, this could also highlight romance, um, really intense passions, really deepening intimacy in romance, um, especially when it comes to like love affairs, boyfriends, girlfriends, like, you know, flings, those types of things. So um, really communicating from the heart, getting to the truth, getting to the core of what what you're truly passionate about and how you're expressing that out into the world. And you're going to be able to communicate those things more effectively because you have Jupiter and Scorpio. So this is going to expand on your ability to communicate deeply, intimately, and truthfully with the people around you and to communicate your truth and your authenticity in a way that is, um, um, a little bit more well received, right? Where you have a deeper understanding of what it is that you're trying to convey. This could also aid you in, you know, if you own your own business, if you're an entrepreneur, this could be, you know, focusing on the truth about what it is that you've been doing with your business, right? And like having to look at the good, hard, like this is, you know, this wasn't working for me or something that's hard for you to look at, right? Where you don't want to admit the truth, but the truth will come out. It'll be communicated to you either from the outside or you'll be thinking about it. You'll understand it a little bit better. And then you'll be able to integrate that into a new marketing strategy, right? Something along those lines could come up for you. Um, the change that is going to be happening as a result of this is going to be a change that is involving um, the way that you use or abuse your power and the way that you allow your power to be sort of taken from you and the way that you give up your power to other people. So this is going to be a change that causes you to empower yourself um, and to empower yourself from the inside out. And this could also be a change in terms of, you know, this could be a health or a healing process that, that goes on as well. Um, that can be very physical, but you're going to be changing the way that you express your passions out in the world this week. And that's what you're really going to be looking at. Okay, Libra and Libra rising. Uh, this is going to be um, overall a pretty good week. Um, so for Libra rising people, the beginning of the week, you're going to be thinking about romance, that fire, that passion with your romantic partnerships. Um, also, you could be thinking about business partnerships, collaborations. This is going to highlight all of your one-on-one -on -one relationships and interactions early this week. So there's going to be a lot of energy around that. And as we come into the middle of the week, you're going to be thinking about the deeper stuff, sex, um, intimacy, uh, your deepest fears, your deepest anxieties about your relationships. Those types of things can come up as well. Uh, debt, you know, taxes, other people's money, those things you might be thinking about. Money might be on your mind. Investments might be on your mind. As we come into, you know, the middle of the week and at the end of the week, you're going to be focusing more on adventure play, um, expanding your, your, expanding your horizons through, experience, right? Experiential wisdom, learning through experience, those types of things will come up more toward the end of the week. 
Um, but midweek, as we were talking about before, uh, midweek, there's going to be a lot of energy around your home and your family situation. So this could be some sort of uh, truth that you haven't been wanting to look at when it comes to your living situation, your property, your home, your family, especially your biological family that you grew up with, like, you know, your parents or, you know, your siblings. Well, your siblings are more the third house, but your parents or your biological family that you've created yourself, your kids, the way that you're raising your kids, power struggles with, within your family dynamic, those things can come up to be talked about. Um, you can deepen your intimacy through communication with your family members as well. So this is a time period when you can really deepen your connection with your family. Uh, and, you know, this is do, doing this and working on this and focusing on this um, is going to help you. This communication will help you to expand in your wealth, your resources, your money, your generosity. Um, or your generosity, your wealth, your, your money, and all of that can help you to um, sort of connect with your family, I guess, in a lot of different ways. I think it's more going to be the other way around. So this is going to help you, especially if you're looking at property, if the energy is around property and home and, you know, your living situation, it's going to translate into um, a deeper understanding of your financial situation and what you need to do with your finances moving forward and how you can expand um, even more greatly on your on your wealth and on your resources with Jupiter and Scorpio in your second house this whole year is about you expanding on your money expanding on your resources where you know money will flow in for you a lot more easily and maybe this is you thinking about making an investment in some sort of property that is something that you could do and you know especially with Saturn transiting your fourth house this is a year when if you do want to invest in land property ownership something like that taking on that responsibility is actually uh, you know favorable throughout this year, especially with Jupiter and Scorpio, because you're going to have the money and the resources to do that if you've been working on that. Um, and then, you know, the change that you need to make is going to be a change in your relationships. So looking at your, your roots, your comfort zones, your home situation, and being a little bit more protective of that situation, that might cause you to have to change something in terms of your relationships with other people. It be that a romantic relationship, a business partnership, or any sort of close friendship. So relationships might be be beginning or ending this week, especially if you have planets um, at 19, 20, you know, 21 degrees in Scorpio, Capricorn, or Aries. All right. Um, Scorpio. <laughs> Scorpio and Scorpio rising. On Monday, you're going to be, uh, you know, focusing a lot on your work and your day-to-day -day routines. It's going to feel like you're going to be very busy um, doing a lot of things, making a lot of plans, you know, working on your health, um, your health routines or your health uh, might come into focus. You might have to, you know, jump in and start a new routine. This might be when you start your New Year's resolution to like exercise more or have better nutrition or whatever it is that you, you know, resolve to do in terms of your health. Um, that would be a great time to start something like that. And to start the week off right when it comes to your health and your own well-being and your own daily routines and setting up good routines for yourself at the start of this week, that's going to be very helpful. As we come into... Um, you know, the middle of the week, you're going to be focusing more on your relationships, on intimacy in your relationships, on comfort in your relationships, stability in your relationships, feeling good and supported in your relationships. And um, the other thing that you're going to be focusing on is communication. There's going to be a lot of really intense communication this week. Um, that is sort of the, the hallmark of this week. So you're going to have a lot of very odd circumstances, a lot of very intense um, circumstances and communications that come through siblings, through your community, through your networks, um, just your normal day-to-day -day communications can become much more intense. And, um, you know, the deep truth, the deep truth in the way that you structure your life, you structure your day-to-day -day experience, you structure your communications, that can come out into the open so you can see it and so you can transform something. And there are going to be changes that need to be made. Um, and you're going to, the communications that come about midweek will give you a hint as to what changes are going to need to be made or what sort of um, chaos might stir up toward the end of the week in terms of your day-to-day -day health routines, right? We're talking about health. We're talking about your day-to-day -day routines, your work, um, and the way that you structure your work that might need to change and so you know focusing on that communication and looking for clues as to where this can translate to change in other areas of your life that's going to be sort of key and especially where it can translate to change when it comes to your health and your well-being and your day-to-day -day experience and routines um, you know, for the most part, I do see this as being beneficial to you because Jupiter is in Scorpio, right? And so 
understanding all of this is going to help you to expand on your understanding of yourself and who you are and how you want to project your energy out into the world in a way that's very truthful, that's very authentic, that's very um, you, right? Very intense and to the point. <laughs> that's Scorpio, right? Um, and, you know, you're not afraid to look at the deeper stuff. So this, you know, I think this can be mostly beneficial. And so you're going to feel this most intensely, again, if you have your any of your personal planets at the middle to end degrees of Scorpio, Capricorn, or uh, Aries, or, you know, especially with Aries, um, with this square, if you have anything in the cardinal signs too, like Libra or in Cancer, you know, that might come up as well. And just a little bit more intensely. I mean, you might have a little bit more of an influence of this. All right. Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting week for you guys as well. Um, <laughs> and not, I don't mean that in a bad way at all, but you're going to start off the week by wanting to focus more on your passions, your hobbies, your interests, the things you love to do. And, you know, so you'll, you'll need to make some changes toward the end of the week based on your passions, based on what it is that you want to create out into the world, the way that you want to express your heart and your authenticity out into the world. And, um, you know, you're going to get a clue as to what needs to change at the beginning of the week when we have this moon conjunction to Uranus, which happens on Tuesday. And then, you know, as we come into the middle of the week, you're going to be focusing more on your day-to-day -day routines. Okay, what, I, what do I need to change in order to take my passions and, you know, create something with that to change um, and to integrate the things that I love to do a little bit more so in my day-to-day -day experience? That's going to be a lot of the Sagittarius energy this week. The other thing, too, is there's going to be a lot of focus on finances, um, especially toward the middle of the week. A lot of really intense conversations and communications about finances, about debt in particular, other people's money, joint finances. If you're married, that's going to come up this week for you. Uh, this could be a really powerful time to create a good, a better budget, to uh, pay off debts, to save money, um, you know, to figure out what you need to do and what the truth is, what, where you've been allowing the power to be taken away from you when it comes to your ability to create wealth and resources for yourself. And, um, you know, so that's going to be sort of an intense energy at the middle of the week, but it's going to be very beneficial. It's going to help you to grow and to expand and to um, have a better understanding of what you need to do moving forward and what changes you need to make in terms of your hobbies, your passions, your day-to-day -day routines. All right. And then toward the end of the week, the focus is going to be more on your relationships for Sagittarius rising. So you're going to want to come back into balance through relationship with, you know, your partners, with the close personal friendships, one-on-one -on -one relationships. You're going to be focusing more on the other and, um, you know, the way that you can feel safe and supported and secure through your relationships. And that's going to be sort of your reprieve at the end of the week. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, uh, for you guys in particular, this is a very interesting week, but um, it's gonna start off with that moon in Aries, which is gonna be focusing on your roots, your home, your family, your property. You might not feel like going off and going to work if you are somebody who works outside of the home. You might wanna focus more inward, more focus more on your immediate surroundings, focusing more on your family. There might be a pull to sort of stay home and stay in your comfort zones because you, know, you really need to focus your energy on your family and on your property for whatever reason. And then as we come into, um, um, you know, the middle of the week, you're going to be focusing more on your passions, your hobbies, your interests. What's, what gets you fired up to take action? What, what do you love to do? This will be a more playful time. Um, in general, right? Emotionally, you'll feel a little bit more playful, more passionate, um, more romantic, more like, you know, doing things that are a little bit more fun, more light. But you're going to have this really intense energy um, in your sign with this Mercury-Pluto conjunction. So this is going to affect you more so than the other signs. And so, there's a lot of intensity surrounding your identity, finding the truth at the core of who you are. Who are you really? What are you passionate about? What did you come here to do? What is your truth? That is going to be the focal point of the middle of this week, and it's going to be very intense. You're going to have to take a deep, hard look at yourself and the structures that you've created around your identity in this world and where that needs to be broken down to a certain extent so that way you can become more who you are authentically. And you know this is going to cause you to change something about maybe your family situation, your home life, your property. You might be thinking about you know moving or you know doing something differently uh, in your home situation there might be something about your family dynamic that needs to change and you're going to find support though through this week through you know your friends your social networks that's where you're going to really find support that's where you're going to be able to expand through this self-knowledge you'll be able to expand on your intimacy and your connection with your friends and with the right friends all right and then Aquarius and Aquarius rising 
So this week, we'll start off with you focusing a lot on communication. There's going to be a lot of chitter chatter and, you know, talking about this, that, and the other thing, your plans, communications, a lot of emails, text messages, phone calls, um, engaging with your community, engaging with short distance travel, engaging with siblings and extended family. All of those things can come up at the beginning of this week. A lot of communications. So you're going to hit the ground running with your communication. You're going to be ready to answer all those emails, make all those phone calls, call this person, you know, do all those things that you need to do, bureaucratic stuff too, like paperwork and those types of things. That may be, you know, taking up a good portion of the beginning of your week. <clears throat> As we move into the middle of the week, the focus is going to be more on um, your like home, your family. Actually, no, the focus is going to be more on um, yeah, your home and your family situation, right? Where is this? Yeah, <laughs> I drew this kind of badly, so it's a little off kilter. <clears throat> but the focus is going to be more on your home, your family, wanting to lay down roots, wanting to go inward, wanting to spend time in your comfort zones. And so, you know, you might want to retreat a little bit uh, toward the middle of this week. And especially because that conjunction that's going on between Mercury and Pluto is happening in your 12th house. And so that's going to really pull you inward. It's going to pull you, um, you know, into solitude, right? Into contemplation, into really spending time away from the world to really hone in on what you truly desire and what needs to be transformed from the inside out moving forward. And if you do this, it's actually going to help you in terms of your career and your public life. So taking the time to go in, we're taking the time to retreat this week if you need to, especially at the middle of the week, which is sort of untimely for some people in their day-to-day -day schedules. But making time to do that is going to be very, very important. Spending time in solitude, spending time alone, spending time at home, um, and spending time in your comfort zone so that way you have the time to reflect and to go inward and to get that deeper insight that you're going to need that's going to carry you through the week and that's going to help you to expand um, on what it is that you're doing out in the world in terms of your career and you're going to expand on your truth in those areas you're going to expand on what you truly desire your true passions what you truly should be focusing on uh, but in order to do that it requires that you take some time out. Otherwise, you're not going to understand what you need to expand on and what you need to do moving forward in order to in order to transform and to change. Toward the end of the week, there might be a little bit of chaos surrounding communication, right? Um, paperwork, messages, emails, all these different things. You might need to change the way that you communicate your ideas to people based on what you discovered by going in more early in the week, right? So. There's going to be a lot that's up for change. Your day-to-day -day routines uh, this week might be a little um, off kilter. You know, you might not be able to stick with your normal habits or normal routines, uh, but that's okay because, you know, everybody needs a little bit of a break sometimes, a break from routine, a break from, you know, the day-to-day -day grind, uh, especially when there is a call to go in where there is a call to retreat, there is a call to, you know, take a look at yourself on the inside to Go, do the spiritual work with the deep spiritual work, right? Like the shadow work that sometimes people call it. Um, so yeah. All right. So Pisces and Pisces rising. So for you guys, you're going to start off the week focusing on money. <laughs> this is a good time to get your plans together at the start of the week, like start focusing on how, what you need to change in order to create more resources for yourself in order to pay all your bills in order to, um, you know, save the money that you need to save planning for the future, planning for your resources. That's going to be important. So money will be on your mind at the beginning of this week. And there might be a little bit of turbulence around that where you feel like money's a little bit short with the moon squaring Saturn. Um, but that's going to resolve itself. You're going to figure out that you need to change something and that change is going to come about on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, it'll be very apparent like that you need to change something and it'll be apparent what you need to change and how you need to change it in terms of your resources. And as we come into the middle of the week, there's going to be a lot of energy surrounding communication and the communication might stem, uh, the communication energy might stem from the, the need to communicate what it is that you need and what it is that you want and what it is that you desire in terms of your income, your money, your finances. So if you need to, you know, talk to your boss about getting a raise or renegotiate some sort of contract, that's the time when that's going to come up for you. And um, also your social networks too, that's going to be coming up. You're going to have some very intense, deep, intimate conversations with your friends, your social network where you're, it's not going to be like surface level chit chat. You're really going to be getting to the truth and getting to the core of the issues. You might just have people calling you with really intense situations. Um, that sometimes happens with this kind of energy in the 11th house where your friends are all in crisis and they're all calling you and it's really intense. Uh, or it could be that you're hashing things out together and you're looking at the truth. You're getting to the core of, of these issues that, um, 
have been for preventing you from accumulating the wealth that you need to create for yourself in order to have that stability and that safety and that security in your life. And so a lot of really intense issues surrounding your friends, your social networks, you might need to expand on and change your belief systems based on what comes up with your friends, right? You mean that might cause you to look a little bit deeper and to change the way, um, to change what you believe about the world at large, your philosophies, your, um, your ideas about the broader perspective, the bigger picture, you know, your, your integrity also, you might need to expand on your integrity a little bit by going inward and looking at yourself um, in order to, you know, show up a little bit more authentically, a little bit more truthfully. Um, so yeah, so there's going to be, and also expanding that might cause you, you know, some sort of communication with your friends, um, and your social networks might cause you to pursue a little bit more education in, in some area, uh, or to seek out a new teacher, or maybe, you know, even just to travel and to, you know, explore a new location. So that's, um, yeah, that's Pisces and Pisces rising. And so the change that needs to be made is a change in the way that you go about creating resources for yourself. If I didn't mention that already. And that will come about at the end of this week. All right. So that was my forecast for the week for all 12 signs. And um, so, yeah, I hope that that was helpful to you. If you have any questions about anything that we just covered, feel free to comment in the comment section below. I always love to answer your questions. Or you can send me an email um, at heather at persephonereturns.com. I will leave my email address in just the description below. And as always, you can book a reading with me live, um, just like this in a video chat, where we can go through your birth chart, your transits, relocation, whatever it is that you're interested in looking at um, and going deeper into. We can absolutely take a look at that. And uh, so yeah, I hope to hear from some of you and I hope you all have a really wonderful week. Overall, the energy is very good, very intense, very, um, there's a lot of passion, a lot of intensity, a lot of intimacy this week. And I actually really like that kind of energy because it's usually conducive to um, uncovering things that need to be uncovered and looking at and addressing things that we've been sort of repressing and suppressing and holding in that really, really need to be addressed in order to create the change that we need to create in our lives. And that's really the theme of this week. So um, it should be a good week. It should be an interesting week. And yeah, so be sure to stay tuned. Uh, I have a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of plans. I'm going to be making a whole series on your Uranus and Taurus talks that I mentioned at the beginning. And so I'll start with a video about Uranus and Taurus in general. And I'll be doing Uranus and Taurus videos by sign on Astrolata's YouTube channel, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks as well. So you can look out for that. But that's enough announcements. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.